What is going on guys and welcome back to another fishing adventure. So today we are installing live scope on the bass boat. I've talked about this for the past week now and it is finally time to get it installed. I am freaking excited. We got everything that we need to get it installed. So let's get started. Check out that catfish. So real quick, I'm going to unbox everything, take it all out, save that. So everything about LiveScope is pretty simple. Installing it is really easy and using it is really easy. It's literally turn on the screen and it's pretty much ready to go. But here is everything that you need. So you need to order a Garmin black box. This is pretty much the brains of the whole operation. And then you also got the LiveScope transducer. This comes in the same package. Uh, another thing too, Garmin actually just released a new LiveScope transducer. It's called the LiveScope Plus. This is the old one. Uh, usually every time I buy something, the promo for the new updated version will drop the very next day. It's happened like four times with GoPros and it's just happened with this Garmin LiveScope as well. So I bought this, ordered it, it showed up in the mail and the very next day I saw a promo for the new LiveScope Plus. So if you want to get LiveScope on your boat, check out the newer version. It uh, literally just dropped yesterday. <laughs> and then you got the four screws that screw down the black box to the boat. Then you got some more little clips here for that. And then here are all the attachments to attach the LiveScope transducer to the trolling motor. That's the hardware for that as well. And then you got the power cable for the black box. So this goes to the black box and then to the battery. The battery already has cables connected to it. This is a quick disconnect. It connects to the power cable to the black box. This black box constantly runs power. There's no on off switch. If you leave it connected, it will drain your battery. So I added a quick disconnect so I can unplug it and that's pretty much the off switch. So that's pretty much the entire operation for the lap scope. So like I said, I'm using the same fish finder. It is compatible with the LiveScope system. I had to go ahead and order a new power cable for that. And then also had to order a new cradle here. And then you got this attachment here that connects to the fish finder. This mount will be mounted up there. So each boat will have its own mount, its own set of wires. It's just the screen and the battery that we're sharing. So we can uh, go ahead and get started. Oh, also you got four screws to mount this as well. Uh, which looks like I won't be using. I'll probably just replace those. So here is the fish finder that I have on the boat right now. So I'm just gonna get rid of this completely. Let's go ahead and start installing this. Actually, before we can install this, we have to take all this apart. All right, so first things first, we need to uninstall the old fish finder. Who wants to buy it? 500 bucks. I'll throw in an Adam Ryan sticker. <laughs> All right, so this old mount is gone. I'm gonna throw that back in the box, get it sold. But uh, I'm actually gonna be using the same mount that he has on here just to get it on and attached. I may change it down the road, I'm not really sure. I might want this uh, live scope screen to be a little bit higher, but we'll see. I'll use it like this for now and see if I wanna change it. But guys, the boat's really dusty right now because we had that 28 mile per hour winds and me being the idiot I am, I did not put the boat cover on. So everything's pretty dusty right now. But, you know, this is a boat. It's gonna get used, it's gonna get dirty. That's the thing too, like, before I bought this boat, this boat was barely used, and now a fishing YouTuber bought it. It's gonna get used, all right? It's gonna get used almost every day, if the weather permits. I guess let's start cutting off all these zip ties. So I just got all these zip ties cut off of the transducer wire and let me show you this. See that mark right there from that zip tie? Everywhere that there's a zip tie, it left a mark. And you can kind of see it pinch that wire. See that? That is why you do not want to use zip ties on your transducer wires, especially on this live scope wire. This is a thousand dollar cable and transducer, right? 
And if you try to, say this breaks, you hit a rock, it breaks, it stops working, and you try to get a warranty with Garmin, which you do have a warranty. But, say you use zip ties, you send this off, and Garmin sees these marks on your cable, they will not replace it for you. Using zip ties on this cable will void your warranty. So that is very important. Don't use zip ties, use electrical tape. Number one rule for installing live scope. I'm gonna go grab a flathead and we can take off the transducer. I got the transducer off, it is here, and the warrants has a crazy freaking mount bracket. But here are all the wires. I'm going to take off this panel here, unscrew the four screws here. So I just got this panel off. The power wire goes here, and then connects to these wires here, which is all connected inside there. So there's my rods, you can see the rod tips. So this is actually gonna be really simple. I thought I was gonna have to run some wires, but I won't have to. I'm just gonna use the same wires that he has here, remove this power cable, and then connect mine. Of course, connect it the right way. You don't want this crap on your boat, but we will replace and fix that. Sweet, super, super simple. We can remove these wires from this panel. We just need to cut this zip tie, and then this transducer wire will come out. Beautiful. Why do they not center that? Come on, people. Just kidding. All right, so there is the transducer free. I just disconnected the battery, so no power to those wires now. Now we can go ahead and take apart this power cable. Again, not the way to do connections on a boat. Not good. I got the old fish finder all packaged up and ready to be sold and now we can focus on installing the new one. So I'm going to start with installing the transducer and I'm installing the transducer on the trolling motor on this boat. On my John boat I made a separate pole mount for it so I can turn it any direction I want but this time we'll have to work the trolling motor to work the transducer. So to mount the transducer you got these two mounts. These are the mounts for the trolling motor. You got this piece of rubber matting here. Then you got four screws, a bolt, a metal washer, and then a rubber washer. So to mount this, first you want to mount this to the transducer. On this piece here it shows up arrows, so that needs to be facing up. Up is the, where the cord is. Drop in your rubber washer. Drop in the metal washer, and then use this bolt here to screw that on. It does come with an Allen wrench. Don't forget to drop everything and have to restart the entire process. You want to get this tight, but not too tight. You still want it to be able to spin, which is why they include that rubber washer. See, that's too tight. So on this transducer, you have the down view and then forward view, and it's just one click away to change from forward to down. So get that bolt tight, but not too tight where you can't turn it, but also not too loose where it turns freely. So, but there is how you install that piece and now she's ready to go on the trolling motor shaft. We need the rubber mat, the other piece, and the last four bolts to do that. That's uh, we got the transducer here and I'm gonna put this about six inches from the head of the trolling motor. Uh, also keep in mind what way your trolling motor sits when you put it on the base. I always put my blades on this side and uh, that's just how I've always done it. If you put this transducer on the wrong side, say I put it on the upside down side, whenever I shut the trolling motor it's going to smash the transducer. So just keep that in mind what way it needs to be. So the kit comes with this black rubber piece that is to keep the transducer in place so it can't slide up and down the shaft. So again, I'm gonna do about six inches. I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna guess. People do six inches, people do a foot. It, it, six inches is probably the perfect amount. Eh, I'm not gonna say it, but you know what I'm thinking. A lot of people will do it this way and then they have a hard time to get the last piece on. But if you flip this around, hold it, and then put this piece on like that, it, it gets rid of that hard process of trying to 
get the rubber piece on. Okay, there's the top piece. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the bottom piece. And that's how you squeeze it all together. It is freaking cold and my hands hurt. Fun, fun. But it is a beautiful day. Also guys, it does not matter what side this is mounted to. You just want it straight with the boat. So before you get it all the way tight, make sure she's straight. Also, when you tighten up these bolts, you want to do it in a start pattern. That way it all tightens down evenly. All right, so there is the mount mounted to the shaft. It is tight, it cannot slide up and down. And the transducer is still loose enough to shift down and to forward. On the Live Scope Plus, which is the brand new transducer they just came out with, there's actually a knob that you turn. So it is a lot easier to adjust the tightness of this transducer. On this one, the screw to adjust that is inside here. So once you screw this all together, you cannot get to that. So if I wanted to tighten this up, I would need to take all this off and it kind of sucks. That is installed, son of a bitch. That looked straight before, but I can definitely tell it's not straight now. So I need to adjust this, loosen these bolts and make it straight with the trolling motor. The trolling motor is how you aim your transducer. So if you think you're aiming your trolling motor at this tree, but your transducer is not straight, you think you're aiming it this way, but your transducer is actually aiming over here. So you're gonna be casting at a fish that you think is at this tree, but really it's over here. So that is why it is important to get that straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. So you gotta be pretty careful with how you tighten the bolts on this because that can affect and change how it sits. And like I said, you want it straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire up the shaft. Again, using electrical tape. So you need to leave some slack in this wire in a few spots. You wanna leave it down here so you can turn this. And then you also want to leave slack in this area up here because this troll motor is gonna be spinning. And you're gonna be having it attached to this wire and attached to this. If that's tight, that won't be able to spin. So you need to leave slack in the wire up there as well. All right, so I am losing daylight. We may have to finish this project tomorrow, but I just need to tape up the cord here. I'm gonna step on the trolling motor, spin it around all the way and make sure we have enough slack. Careful not to hit the uh, transducer on the trailer though. It's all the way twisted. I'm going to lock it in place with one piece of tape and then I'm going to spin it all the way around the other direction and make sure it's still loose enough. Alright, it is the next day. Let's go ahead and finish this install. We need to continue wrapping this wire to this wire. So I got that wire taped all up and this wire has a big end and it's going to have to pass through this plate. So I'm going to have to drill out this hole bigger so that fits through there. Now I need to go ahead and rewire the power wire to that positive and negative down inside the hole. So I got these positive and negative wires for the power cable connected with the waterproof butt connectors. Also went ahead and taped off these ends as well, just so there's no live ends anywhere in the boat. And then I also went ahead and ran the wires through the hole. And that is the last of the wires that we have to run. So the black box is going to be going in this rod locker right here because that is the rod locker where I have all the life jackets, the paddles, nav lights, stuff like that. All my fishing poles are on this side. So all the electronics will be over here 
up in this corner right here. I need to shove all these wires through the hole and this whole area over here is open. So I can just reach it back and then grab it from over here. I got both the wires here. These will run to the black box and then this wire will run to the battery that will also be in this compartment. So I can go ahead and close up this panel here. All right, got that all back in place. I went ahead and taped off this hole. I wish I could put a grommet there, but I don't have grommets thick enough. This plate is way too thick for a grommet to fit. So before we move on to in here, I wanna go ahead and get the mount on and get the fish finder on and get those wires in place and then shove the excess down in the hole, so. All right, boys, she's attached, all plugged in. Looking good. We can go ahead and hook the wires back up to the batteries now. So it is time to install the black box. I just got the transducer, the uh, network cable that goes to the fish finder, and then the power cable, which is here, that will get connected to the battery. So now we just need to drop this inside here. And I was thinking about attaching it to this inside the wall right here. So that is kind of my plan. That's hard to film, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this screwed into place onto this wall, and then I can show y'all somewhat better. Hard to do with one hand. All right, we got her drilled in. I was able to get three screws. I was, I'm happy with three screws. If, uh, let me drop the camera in there. So there is the black box screwed to the wall. We got a screw here in that corner and then this top corner up here. This top corner was such a pain in the butt that uh, I said screw that last corner, it's not gonna happen. But she is in there, she will never come off. It's solid, so I'm happy with three screws. So there's the black box installed. Oh, so far, that one screw, that was the worst part of doing this install. So the box is right here. Originally I was gonna do it right here so I could see it, make sure I don't ever hit it with anything. And I was about to screw into the wall and I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. This compartment goes up into this area, so I almost screwed into this compartment. So you have to be careful where you're screwing through your boat. Luckily, I thought about that the second before I started drilling, so I had to move it up here, which made it more difficult, but there's nothing in this area. Just a pain in the butt. It wasn't hard, just a pain in the butt to get the right angle with the screws and all that crap, so. Now, now we just need to get the battery in here. Um, I need to secure down the battery as well. That is going to be the tricky part. So I'm gonna do some thinking and uh, I'll get back to you on that. I thought about throwing it in this box. I could, you know what? It was an inch or half an inch too tall, but this box doesn't need, it doesn't need to be in a box. It doesn't need to be waterproof, right? I can take this lid off and still use this box screw down the box so the box is secure and then the battery will sit in the box. I'm gonna figure it out and then I'll turn the camera back on once it's done. All right, so here is where I put the battery. We got her inside this box here, got the box screwed down. I don't have a strap right now, so next time I'm at Walmart, I'm gonna go grab a Velcro strap and then unscrew this, put the strap underneath it and screw through the strap. That way the strap is also tie down to the boat as well and then we'll have a strap going over that I just don't want to run to the store right now I just want to get this done get the video done and edited and uploaded today but uh sick traffic noise thank you thank you it's funny the uh, neighbor he was running a drill over here when I was filming and I was like man the new neighbor sucks he, uh, <laughs> he keeps running drills all day long and then I realized that was me the last six months building the John boat <sighs> I probably annoyed the crap out of my neighbors, but I'm gonna grab a strap and then that will be the placement for this battery. And then of course we still have all this open space for the rod locker. Of course we do have to be careful of the black box right there and of course those wires. But I mean, honestly, this is all that I store. One thing I do hate about this boat, guys, these front rod lockers do not have a strut, so they don't stay open. 
Every other door on this boat stays open. This door here has a strut, but the rod locker doesn't. So I'm always sticking things in it like this paddle here to keep them open. And to charge this battery, I will have to take it to the John boat because it has the lithium charger. There's not a lithium charger on the bass boat. That's the only lithium battery on the bass boat. But guys, we now have live scope on the bass boat, baby. I'm freaking excited about that. And in a week, we're heading down to an awesome lake. So, cannot freaking wait. But the weather's actually supposed to be nice tomorrow. No wind. It's gonna be pretty cold. But I'm gonna take the bass boat out tomorrow and test out the live scope. Hopefully see if we can get some fish to eat. All right, so we now have the live scope installed on the bass boat. I can't wait to use it. We're gonna go out tomorrow and test it out. But guys, it really is that simple. I mean, it sounds hard, it seems hard if you've never done it before, but it is so freaking easy. You could probably get it done in about 30 minutes. If you're not filming and constantly moving cameras like I am, 30 minutes, I bet you could wipe this thing out no problem. Maybe an hour, but uh, it is super simple. And it's easy to use. It's pretty much plug and play, and I will show you that tomorrow. We will turn the screen on and it will be ready to go. It is that simple. This is crazy, man. Before I installed one, I thought this would be super hard to set up, but it's not. Like for the technology that it is, it is awesome technology, but so simple. But guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.